Okay, <clears throat> this is the test. I'm using Manicam and uh, I'm just, I just have my 4K monitor going. Um, I've disconnected the other monitor. I have the Logitech Brio camera there on a tripod, so it's up a little bit high. And then I've also got the Logitech C920E, I believe it is, uh, mounted on top of this. <clears throat> this is my 4K monitor, so it uh, it goes up and down easily. And uh, I've got it set up kind of high, so I'm looking straight at it. But my chair here is a piece of crap. The <laughs> cylinder head, hydraulic cylinder has gone so I sometimes go down 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 so I guess I could pull that down with me um, this is a test since I switched some things around to um, sort of do a test here let's uh, now I could be doing okay I don't need to click back well I already clicked it didn't I um, I could do 4K. Wow, wait a minute, what the heck is this? Sixteen U.S. Marines arrested for alleged crimes, including human s smuggling. Let's see, the House passes a sweeping budget and debt limit deal. Well, that's good because in the past, and I was worried that uh, the administration would uh, hold us hostage some way. Okay, well, you're not going to get, you know, the government's going to go financially broke, can't pay its bills or something rather, and unless you, I don't know, Allow the building of a golf course on the White House. I don't know, something crazy. Who knows? So I'm, Anyway, it sounds good so far. I'm not in favor of the death penalty. And I see here now the bar has ordered uh, to start the federal death penalties. Back, I didn't know they'd stopped, actually. Republicans in Congress are blocking election security bills. That seems kind of strange after we do know for certainly for sure that the Russians in the last election and actually now are uh, doing everything they can to influence the election. And here, I don't know, maybe, maybe they... Uh, Republicans working with the Democrats will come up with, but I doubt it. I just doubt it. That Republicans don't seem like they're interested in, I don't know. Uh, Canada has a manhunt, go manhunt, manhunt going on. That sounds sort of gay, doesn't it? I'm always surprised, you know, when I hear... Uh, uh, somebody doing a shooting or um, a killer or something, and it turns out to be a Canadian. I'm like, oh, I didn't know Canadians did that kind of stuff. God, I hate Equifax and all the, the other with their, I guess there's three. Uh, uh, can't remember the names now. I think Exo, Exofax is the same one of the three that back X number of years ago uh, gave away our data um, in violation of the law. I mean, flagrantly gave away our data, sold our personal data that they collect. They're, oh, for people outside the United States, and I may be wrong, maybe there's more than three. There are three, they're not collection agencies, they are credit things. And 
everybody pours data into them. Your banks, if you have a loan, uh, if you have a credit card, whatever you have, all the data goes into these three credit agencies. And they come up with a number and ratings and all that type of stuff. And then all banks, uh, credit card, if you want to buy a car or anything, those companies pay, you know, the company, the car dealer will be paying a certain amount of money. I don't know whether it's every month or how they work it out, but they have it. And they can look up, you know, your credit score. And, but that information is, on the one hand, these places can look it up, but on the other hand, I guess there's parts of it that are, are not to be, anyway, there's rules. And man, they, I think it's Equifax. They, I mean, it was like, screw you. We're, we're selling your data to anybody that wants it. So the Federal Trade Commission or whichever federal agency it was must have been under a Demo Democratic administration because Republicans probably, administ a Republican administration probably would not have uh, allowed a crackdown on, on them. But anyway, I think that was at that time the, the biggest, uh, they had to pay a fine, the biggest fine that any corporation or anybody had ever paid in the history of the capitalist system here in the United States. And they apologized and said they, uh, and then I was one of the people, they let your people know, having it, millions of people, and, oh, of course, now they were sued in a class action suit, meaning all these lawyers get together and all the victims, we really, <laughs> what always happens in those cases, all these lawyers get together and have a one join it into one case. They sue, well, the company makes a deal. Okay, here's our deal. And the lawyers and the law firms and all those get millions and millions and millions or maybe billions of dollars from these and the victims get nothing and I was uh, one of the people yeah that, okay I think that was the one or maybe it was a bank I can't I think that was the one and uh, so I said yeah I filled out the little form that the lawyer sent to out all the victims, and uh, so I think I, the deal was like, I forget what it was, oh, you can have five dollars, or you can have free uh, credit report monitoring, and you know, here in the United States, whenever you try to do anything, if you have a credit card or whatever, they're always, everybody's always, banks are always trying to, oh, you need credit service here, you know, $25 a year or 50 a year or whatever. And you always have, if you got to make sure you don't check that box or you'll get signed up for something, which is, everybody knows it's a racket, you know. But so <laughs> I think I had a choice. Okay, $5, you can have $5 or we'll sign you up for this service. And I said, you know, $5, you know. Give me the service. So I took the service. Immediately, Equifax, if that's the one that it was, made the service that they offered of monitoring your credit and you could log in or whatever. They made it, uh, oh, they, they made it free to everybody because they have advertisements on there and because they, well, they have advertisements on there, but they, offer you things like, oh, here are great credit cards. You should sign up for one of these credit cards. And, of course, they get a commission or, you know, with the things that they're, so they're making, you know, that was, they should have given everybody the thing anyway. So you didn't get it. Nobody got anything. And so here, $700 million to settle this uh, thing. Here's how to claim your money. I... The reason I know a little something about it because there was a bank when I lived in 
at Belton, Missouri, uh, there was a bank, and that's the bank that I did business with, and they were like a local chain, you know, a few, a few banks. And during the years that I had them, um, they got taken over by a bank chain that I never heard of that was uh, a bigger chain, like, you know, multi-states or whatever. I mean, it didn't, make, seemed, it didn't seem to make any difference. And uh, then years later, they were taken over by another. I cannot, don't remember how many times this happened, but very quickly they were taken over, and I think that was, I believe, Bank of America. I think so. can't remember now. Should, but I, well, I didn't write that many checks. <coughs> so it was taken over by that chain. You know, then it was like, oh, okay, the benefits of having a bank that's nationwide or whatever. Okay, you know. So they, um, uh, so they came on board. And then it hit me once or twice, I think. And what happened was, like I, I don't remember exactly now, it's been so many years, but I'm not sure if it was because my my company made direct deposit into the bank account and they made it in the morning. Or if there was some, I can't remember the exact details of this, except, so what the deal was, so I got hit once or twice. I needed to pay for something and I knew that the my company I believe you know that they paid in the morning 2 a.m. or something like that automatic and so I wrote a check or did whatever I did and then I had something bounced and so I was like well, okay uh, I just better never ever do that again. That was stupid of me. I should better wait until I, you know, because the bank got in the morning, you know, the check or whatever, and they, you know, made the check bounce. And then it, in the night or whatever, that night, then of course they credited my uh, two weeks pay into the account. And I thought at the time, huh, oh, okay, well, I just can't ever, you know, do that again. And it was, and I'm thinking you've done it. So months, maybe years later or whatever, front page CNN or whatever, uh, and I think it was Bank of America, but it, it, it's, I'll just say Bank of America, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it came out that that was a deliberate corporate policy across all of their banks. And the policy was when anybody makes any deposits, when the deposits come in, you know, in the morning or whatever, do not put them on the account. Wait till the end of the day. But if any uh, checks or things come to be withdrawn, do those immediately. because And they, they spelled it out, you know, to the employees and in the corporate, you know, thing or whatever, we're doing this in order because uh, that will make X number of uh, insufficient funds happen and that we charge $35 if they're, if, you know, when it happens and what, whatever. It was all strictly done deliberately to screw the, the people who had accounts with them. And so they had to pay a massive, and they were, they were there again, there was a class action suit. And I think in that one, I was uh, subject to it. But anyway, the, the lawyers and the law firms, they got tons of money, showered with money, tons of money. They had, you know, they probably had Brinks armored vehicles pulling up at their law firms and having security people taking in, you know, carts of money to, you know, to those law firms and to those lawyers, 
and the people like myself, and of course there were some people who got screwed by this system multiple times. I could see they got me once. Uh, I really wasn't expecting anything, but I didn't get anything. I, I think maybe there was. Maybe I could have sent the thing back, and I would have got a dollar or something. You know, I'm not even sure that it was that. I think I would have to have proved that on such and such a date that happened, or you know. And but anyway, the law firms got so. Uh, capitalist system. See hundreds of red flags raised internally in the Trump administration about how families are being separated at the border. I live in, uh, I'm not even sure I said I do my regular start. This is Jim Howard, and I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, and today's date is uh, 7th month, July, July 25th of 2019. Um, We had a case here. Well, I actually did make CNN's front page eventually, you know. Uh, there's a young man here in Dallas who, 19 years of age, he went someplace, I think, I think alone, I'm not sure. I, I didn't actually read the entire story. But he was born in America. <laughs> He's an American citizen. Or, uh, and he went someplace small town outside of Dallas Fort Worth area or whatever for a sporting event or something somehow he got arrested by immigration or ISIS or border I don't know you know there's so many I'd really like to see the government do away with the Drug Enforcement Administration they haven't done any good they run around with ski mask on and uh, do all kinds of crap there's that been no improvement you know the We've had a problem with drugs. We've had a problem with drugs. We've had a problem with drugs. The Drug Enforcement Administration has done stuff. The same level, no improvement. It gets worse, I think, actually. I'd like to see us just do away with the Drug Enforcement Administration. Maybe some other agencies, if you know, if you don't show, and two, what they've done with uh for the Drug Enforcement Administration and for other police agencies too. Uh, if uh, somebody uses your house or your car or, I mean, it could be, I guess, your kid or something. I don't know the exact rules. But uh, the police stop them and there's some drugs in the car or drugs at your home or on your boat, your pontoon boat on a lake, or whatever it is, the uh, the police just seize it. And even if there turns out that uh, you're innocent, and maybe the person that had, you know, maybe the person that didn't know he had whatever the it doesn't matter. They take your property, so they're getting brand new cars, expensive cars, boats all that kind of stuff, and the stuff is turned over to the police department, and uh, you're, you know, you're screwed. You're, uh, you'll be very, very unlikely you'll ever get it back. They, the system is just up, you're not going to get it back, and it, you can be, it can be a situation where anybody, any reasonable person would say, oh no, that's not right, you know, this, you know, 90-year-old grandmother uh, lets her grandson uh, move into her house to help her out because she's disabled or something, and uh, he has some drugs there or grows drugs or something, and police find out about it, and uh, they seize the house that belongs to grandma, and uh, she has no place to live. That kind of stuff grievous things like that happen and th there is no justice uh, in you know in the system so um, and I've seen it myself uh, I don't know the exact circ but I, I spent 30 years working hospital security I worked 
uh, 10 or so years as a reserve police officer in a small police department. I had a full county commission for 10 or 15 years in a county. Uh, I really didn't have to do anything. I just had a full county, even their reserve officers and people in that county did not have full commissions. They just had, anyway. So I've been around a little bit. Um, and then I've seen, you know, uh, be working someplace, usually, you know, hospital security or whatever, police officer would or drive up or something in a Mercedes or a Ferrari or something, and he'd say, you know, hey, look at this, and yeah, we can, you know, we seized this, you know, from a drug dealer, and if, when it was a Ferrari or, a, I mean, some unbelievable cars, yeah, you know, I, I could believe it, you know, okay, yeah, you know, doesn't look like, you know, grandpa's, you know, pickup truck or whatever, and they would, you know, remember Highway Patrol or whatever. I forget which kind of vehicle it was, but it was, you know, it was one of those vehicles you see it and you go, wow. And then that was his patrol car, you know, that was his patrol car that he used. You know, he could, he was telling about how fast they could go and all that type, that type of stuff. It's insane, crazy stuff like that that, I gotta read this. I can't believe, you know. Well, I guess it shouldn't be. Two, there's stories now coming out about, you know, SEAL uh, team members or whatever, you know, who we regard as, well, you know, they're in the military, or whatever, so we regard them as, you know, heroes. And, uh, you know, they're our military, God bless our military, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, the SEAL teams, you know, the. We don't know much about them, but we know they've done some fantastic, you know. But we've also seen re now reported stories about how they're kind of running amok and they have, you know, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, uh, don't know. Woman charged in the fatal shooting of pregnant mom who died protecting her toddler. Uh, I think, well. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. Yeah, okay, this 19-year-old uh, boy here in Texas from Dallas, an American citizen, born in America, an American citizen, an American citizen. Somehow he had contact with, I never read the entire story. I don't know whether it was ISIS or ICE or Border Patrol or uh, I don't know who he had, except it was, you know, immigration or whatever. And they snatched him up and they put him in a detention center. So he's a U.S. citizen. Uh, he was in there a month. Well, he was in there two months. He was in there three months. He was in there for three months, and he was a U.S. citizen, and they were making arrangements to deport him someplace. And uh, finally it made the news, you know, hey, this 19-year-old American citizen has been held in detention for, you know, in Texas for uh, three months, but okay, he's been released. And I didn't read the entire story, but now that he's out, he said that for the entire three months he had no bath, no shower, and I didn't read the entire story, but he said he was, he was ready to just tell them, hey, yeah, send me to Mexico, you know, so... Okay, this Navy SEAL here, uh, that's sentenced to reduction in pay and uh, to, to reduction in rank and partial pay. I'm not going to go into that story, but this thing here I did talk about, I believe I talked about that, did I? I've talked about sometimes <coughs> these school lunch programs here in the United States where 
uh, if kids' family are on the poverty level, if you don't, you know, if they, if the families don't have <coughs> the enough money, or you know, whatever the number is set at, uh, those kids get a free lunch. Uh, other kids, you know, have to pay for the lunch if they're whatever. And we, we've had numerous things here in the United States where uh, kids' parents have not paid the lunch fee, and so the kids have been uh, different ways, you know. Kid be in the line, I guess, and the lunch lady would say, no, you can't have, uh, you know, uh, this, but here's, you know, a cheese sandwich because your parents haven't paid. And it's been, sometimes it was, I mean, in, uh, blatant embarrassment and humiliation for the, you know, second grader, third grader, fifth grader, or, you know, <clears throat> or whatever. And uh, this case here was uh, a uh, school district in Pennsylvania. Uh, now they were owed, or they, well, they were owed 2000 I think it was $2,200 that people had not paid. And the school district, I guess, had an automated phone system that would call every Friday if you had, if you're a parent and you had not paid, would call and I guess leave a recorded message. So uh, anyway, the school district sent out a memo or <coughs> a letter to all the parents who were arrears. You know, some of them, I forget, it was like two or three or four of them owed like 250 or $300, the parents, you know, unpaid. And I guess the rest were, you know, smaller amounts of money. Anyway, they sent it out, you know, so they sent out this uh, notice saying, okay, you know, your kids, your child or your children or whatever, uh, has a debit, you know, owes us money, and you need to pay this. And if you don't pay this, there is a possibility that your children may be taken away from you uh, for, because if you're sending your kids, if you're not giving your kids breakfast, or if you're not sending your kids to school with, you know, a bologna sandwich or something, so that would be that you're not, you know, taking care of your children and and your children just may be taken away from you, so you better pay the fuck. Of course, I didn't say that, you know. You better pay the fucking money. Well, of course, now the school school lunch uh, thing is over with an apology and announcement, free lunch for all. But I think actually, I, I think I saw a thing before this where now I, I live on a, uh, just my pension or whatever. Uh, I saw other cases like this, and I've seen where people have come up with two or three thousand dollars. You know, some person has just said, uh, "Somebody that has some money, you know, I'll pay for it." You know, and I think one of them was something like I think it might have been two schools too, or something. Uh, well, I guess a school district. This could be more than one school, but I think it was just one school. But uh, I mean, in a situation like that, if I had some money that uh, I would donate, you know, to something like that to a kid shouldn't have to go through bad enough just being a kid. And especially, well, probably nowadays a lot worse than when I was a kid. And I went to uh, Catholic, you know, went to Catholic uh, grade school, grade schools, two of them, you know. And a Catholic high school, by the way. My mother, I went to Catholic school. My father and I were Catholic. My mother eventually later uh, became a Catholic, but that was after I was grown or whatever. Um, and I've told this story before, so I'll make it short. Uh, Holy Name Grade School was 
until the fourth grade, all through the way through the fourth grade. So then I went fifth grade and sixth grade, and the sixth grade was combined with like seventh grade. They did that, and then right after I graduated, the state or whatever said, no, you, the Catholic schools can't do that, you know, you have to actually have a seventh grade. But anyway, so I went to Holy Name Grade School, and then I went to St. Vincent's Grade School. St. Vincent's Grade School had a cafeteria there, and uh, you had to, you could go to the cafeteria, of course, or you could go home. And... Uh, so I went a couple of times to the, uh, the school cafeteria, and I thought, I don't like this. And, uh, too, another thing happened, <laughs> my mother being Protestant, Fridays you were full, no meat, you know, at the time. And I'd open up my, oops, bologna sandwich, you know. So uh, I just started going across the street to a uh, drugstore over there and uh, having a malt and a uh, hot dog or whatever. And I I was doing that for a long time. I looked out the window and here came, here come the principal of the high school with her, back then they had the robes and the hats and uh, the beads and all that kind of stuff. And she came over there and grabbed me by the ear and drug me out of the place over to the church. And Father Huber uh, pushed me up against the wall or whatever, it told me to behave myself or whatever. So then I just started going home, but I didn't or I didn't go home. I just went towards home and there was a donut shop there. And I had root beer and donuts, and then go back to school. I never went home. Wasn't any reason to go home. Both my parents worked. Of course I could have gone home and made myself a sandwich, you know, but anyway. So I didn't have to go through any of this, you know, shaming or something, rather. Uh, although, I mean, my parents were middle class. We were middle class. I don't think we exactly lived like we were middle class. I think we maybe did. I always had money in my pocket for coming home, you know, passing, uh, walking home or whatever when I was out if I wanted you know, candy bars or soda pop or whatever. I always had change in my pocket. I, I, I don't remember. My mother must have said, "Do you need any money?" You know, and, you know, put it in my pocket. So I always had it. So anyway, I guess this is going to be. Uh, death rate is climbing among young and middle-aged U.S. adults. Is it because we because they don't have health care? United States of America, we don't have, if you're in another country, I'm sure you've heard about it. Uh, Republicans here, the right right wing in the United States, do not think that Americans are entitled to health care. It's like, uh, well, get your own health care. Uh, become a doctor yourself, or uh, uh, they just don't think you're, you're entitled to health care. Uh, They'll say, well, it's not in the Constitution. It's not in the, dec you know, of course, the Declaration of Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Happiness or, you know, <clears throat> whatever. They, they, their opinion is, oh, you're not, in, nobody is, uh, you're entitled, you know, you're not entitled to health care. So, and the Republicans are supposed to be, they're not, <clears throat> supposed to be the people that believe in, you know, military defense or whatever, but, uh, they're, they're not. Actually, they're the exact opposite of that, but they, um, you know, if you have children who are not, you know, babies that are born, mothers are not getting, you know, prenatal care. Babies are not getting care when they're born. Children are not getting, you know, the or the right kind of diet or the right kind of foods or getting health care and getting, you know, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> what kind of a military for, you know, if we uh, get into a con, you know, in, into a conflict, uh, what kind of military? I, I went to a military high school because I wanted to uh, be in the military. My 
I had an older cousin or whatever that was in the mil military police or whatever. And I, I, probably because of him, I wanted to go in the military. That was my entire thing. I graduated from high school. Uh, we were a ROTC, but we were a, what was called a 55C. That was paragraph 55C or something of the thing. And I don't think in a regular junior high school that went, maybe the kids there went three days a week for an hour or something each, you know, each day. And we were military all the time and we did more than, you know, and we were, so we were a 55 C school. So when I went into the military, when I finished basic training, I should have been, uh, I have to go up one pay grade, PFC, I guess. Uh, but I couldn't get in the military. I went and I totally forgot about my hearing loss that I had since like second or third grade. That my parents never did it, but that would have kept me out anyway. Uh, I mean, I would have had hearing aids or something. But but anyway, I was rejected because of being 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. And if back then movie people had needed a person whose bones showed and whatever, uh, I could have got into the movies. Uh, because, so anyway, the military would not take me because I was 40 pounds on minimum weight requirement. Two or three years later, I get a notice, uh, select, you know, selective service physical required. I went, 200 of us, all naked. The doctor there came, pick, he didn't pick anybody, you know, there was 199 people he didn't pick out, but he picked me out and came over. Have you been sick? Yeah, no. Yeah, have you just got out of the hospital? No. Okay. So, and then as we went through the the day, actually half the day. Well, I was there all day. The other hundred and ninety nine guys left at noon or whatever. I was still there till like four o'clock, and they were getting ready to close. I couldn't give them a urine sample. I kept telling them, "Can I just go across the street to the Union Station there, and get a Coke?" No, no, you can't have a yep, you know, whatever. And finally, they said, "You know, go across the street, get a Coke or whatever." I came back and I gave my urine sample. But anyway, I got a card one A. Went down to sign up for the military, you know, Army took the little test or whatever, and I said, you know, I, I wanted to make a career in the military, I was, but, you know, and then they call, you know, the guy, well, you do look kind of thin, called, and then the medical records unit or whatever, oh, we didn't notice that, height and weight, okay, you know, not fit for military service or whatever. What I'd never realized for a long time was my hearing, my hearing alone would have uh, kept me out. And I'm like they had a hearing test when it, the selective service thing. It was you went to a door, and it was somebody on the other side of the door that said, you know, like three, four. And I I heard the number, I guess, correct or whatever. But it's really good that uh, that I didn't slip through. Well, the weight thing would have, you know, but and the hearing would have been. Uh, because I'd have got down, you know, I would have told my my parents, hey, I'm going to the military. And my dad would have told all the people he worked with, hey, my son is going in the military. I mean, you'd think, nowadays you'd think a son would, you know, father would be like, oh, my son is going to Harvard or my son's going to, I mean, not me, you know. But that, but my dad would have been happy just to say, hey, my son's going in the military. And then I would have, you know, they probably would have fucked around a little bit, you know, down at, uh, they, I don't think they'd have put me on a bus, you know, immediately to come home. They'd have probably said, "Okay, well, you can go sweep floors for a week or until we process paperwork or something." And then they'd have, you know, sent me back. And uh, my dad probably, I don't know, my dad probably would have told his friends, uh, "My son was, uh, don't know where my son is. He must be in, you know, I don't know what he would have done. It would have been embarrassing to him." Not embarrassing to me, it would have been embarrassing to me, but not so much to me because I didn't have friends really 
I was involved in Civil Defense, Ground Observer Corps, uh, Peace, or uh, People to People Organization, one of the founders of the people, you know, all this kind of stuff. But it really wasn't. It was all done, like, from my room, basically. I mean, I had, for the People to People Organization, I had to go and sign a charter and, you know, for the thing. But, I mean, it was, it, for me, I'd have just been isolated like I, you know, was. I had my, <clears throat> I spent a few years ago, went to Washington, D.C. to spend two weeks with my daughter, my oldest daughter and her husband. And for two weeks, you know, they showed me, and I, that was great because I'm a news fan, a history fan, a, you know, interested in politics since I was in grade school, all types of stuff. Uh, and that was the first time I'd been to Washington, D.C. Really, the Northeast, first time I'd been to the Northeast, but to Washington, D.C. So I got to see all these places, stand outside the White House, you know, stand outside of Congress, stand on the steps of the Supreme Court and everything. All the things that I've seen in movies, TV shows, and the news, and that I see now, it'll be like, you know, of course, I don't have anybody to tell. I mean, my, I live with my ex-wife, my grown son here. And, uh, but I mean, now I see the news or whatever, and I'll think, yep, I stood right there, you know, whatever, so. But anyway, I, uh, Went, oh, so I had, basically, because I back then I was still having some, not as bad as now, but I was having some mobility problems or whatever, and, and but we did, I managed to, that was, couldn't do it now, but I, we managed every other day for three and a half hours, that's the way it kind of worked out, every other day for three and a half hours, I went with them and we walked around, you know, we took, you know, the transportation where we could but walked around Washington DC the Lincoln Memorial they didn't have water in the uh, thing at the time uh, the um, they were cleaning it or whatever uh, Jefferson Memorial all these places you know went there and for three and a half hours walking and uh, so but anyway then the other days in between I rested up at home and and my uh, son-in-law spent a lot of time we spent a lot of time talking and whatever and he was saying you know I told him some of these stories that you've probably heard and he was like why in the world would you go into the military because of your uh, anti-authoritarian beliefs your Rebellion. I'm not sure exactly how he put it, but he knew some of my stories, you know. And the military would be the worst place in the world for you to be. And I said, yeah, I know that. Late, you know, I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know that I resented authority and that if somebody says, you know, this is an order and I'm over you or whatever, I, you know, this has to be, this is the way it is. Or whatever I didn't I found that out working you know not when I was working as a welder for 10 or 15 years or whatever but when I ended up working security and uh, all these other things that's when I found out that oh you don't want to tell me somebody is a VIP or somebody special I go oh, fucking crazy Ugh. not good I mean it's not something I'm proud of uh, and the f fact that I'm just not going to let an injustice, you know, go. Uh, you know, the right the right thing is the right thing. And I just wouldn't have, you know, I told, I think I told my son-in-law, you know, I probably would have been the first person who was in basic training who was, you know, first and only person who probably would have been executed. You know, they'd have probably firing squad for that person you know whatever because I just have a problem with it so yeah I should not have been in the military but my desire was to go into the military and uh, uh, you know and I, I thought like 20 years you know 20 years and I would retire but uh, I don't think I'd have made it 20 years 
Maybe I would have, though. I mean, you know, there's the structure. And then you have, you know, but I don't think I, my son-in-law didn't think I could make it. And I think probably I would have had, to, it would have, I would have been a different person. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And by the way, this was a test because I've changed things around here. So I may have been talking all this time and no audio or something. So anyway, thank you very much for watching.